All right, so I'm working on a series of videos about the bands that I play for. This is the third one, and it's time to talk about my own band, Swearbox. Um, the way that the Swearbox came about was was that um, I'd started playing for the Paddy Maguire band. I was doing quite a bit of teaching, and I was doing a lot of depth work, and uh, I'd started playing for the John Verity band. But I was, I kind of had a few gaps in my diary and I wanted to fill them up and um, I was looking for something that could just kind of just fill up those few little weekend dates in my diary that weren't filling and um, so uh, what happened was I was playing a jam night um, a jam night for anyone who ever been to a jam night doesn't know what they are um, is basically it's usually a midweek night and a pub will have a host band that um, get paid to um, well basically to, to jam with everyone what the way the way it normally goes is um, the house band would uh, would all be pretty competent players and they would um, start the night off by playing a few tunes and and then the audience is usually full of musicians, singers who uh, want to get up. So gradually the house band gets people up to join them. Members of the house band have a rest. Sometimes full bands come. Sometimes it's just one person. And <clears throat> and um, house uh, jam nights used to be a really big part of what I do. A little less so now, but that's a conversation for another video. Um, but um, they're great because the idea is that a, a really experienced player can come along and get up and jam with some really competent musicians, um, or you know, total beginners can use it as their first opportunity to get up and perform in front of people with a band and. You know any level of ability in between um so we're doing this jam night and uh, a pub nearby was having a big big charity night and so although the jam i was doing normally that jam was very very well attended um it was a kind of a a legendary jam that ran for many 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 years sadly that's not the case anymore. Um, new ownership of the pub and all that. But um, anyway, um, so on this particular night, everybody went to the charity do, which you can understand, you know, um, which left us with only a few people in the audience and only a couple of those people were players. And um, they didn't want to get up and do an awful lot. The, the players that were there only accounted for a couple of tunes so basically we played for about three hours um, myself and the three other guys who were hosting that night we um, we just played and played and played and um, just I was stunned by the amount of songs that we actually knew and at the end of it I was stunned by the standard that we'd perform these songs to um, and, uh, you know, I said to the lads, I said, that, that could have been a gig, you know, um, we could do this. We could, we could do this as a, as a band. We could, because there's a pool of players that do jam nights and it wasn't the same house band every week. So, um, cause that would be really dull. But, um, I said, you know, we could, we could book gigs, um, Especially in a situation where, you know, maybe somebody's kind of last minute cancelled the gig. We, we could do that. You know, we could we say, well, the jam band will do that. And um, just look at who's available from the pool of players for that evening. And go and do a job. And um, so everyone agreed with me. And everybody sounded up for it. And time went on, and I mentioned it a couple more times, and it sounded like they were all still up for it, but it also seemed that if this thing was going to happen, then it was going to be me who was going to have to organise it, make it happen. So, 
with all this in mind, then I go to a pub in Greetland called the Rose and Crown with um, the Paddy Maguire band. And uh, I've not done this pub before. I was setting up and um, Paddy said a naughty word. I can't remember what he said, but it was a very naughty one. And uh, the landlady appeared with this box, the swear box. And she explained that if anybody swore in her pub, they had to put some money in this box. And she collected for a charity with it. So Paddy put a down payment in, he put a, a note in. And, uh, and you know, through, through the gig, I kept seeing her go and accost people, she did swear. And I thought, that's a great, great idea. What a fantastic name for a band. So that's where I stole the name from. Um, and I thought, if I do this, what I want to do is I'm going to have a swear box, have an actual swear box, um, and I'm going to explain to the audience that um, if they swear, throw you know a few pennies in 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 the box, and um, and I'll make it for a charity. Now I decided to um, to collect money for Sheffield Children's Hospital because. That there are many great charities out there and many good causes, but the reason that one's special to me is because when my daughter was um, trying to learn to walk, she couldn't walk. Um, we were convinced there was something wrong with her leg and we kept taking her to hospital and they didn't seem to be able to get to the bottom of it. And cut a long story short, I ended up, I took her to Sheffield Children's Hospital and they diagnosed the problem right away operated right away and it turned out they saved her from losing a leg so um so i'm forever grateful and um as long as i'm running swear box that's who we will collect for so um yeah so you know it's kind of we have a laugh with it um we don't um we don't browbeat anyone with it you know but uh but we do collect a lot of money for a good cause. Last year we collected over a thousand pounds. So as I always say on the stage, it's swearing for a good cause. So please swear generously. Um, anyway, it's, it's like the best idea I've ever had, you know. Um, and um, everybody's entitled to one great idea in their lifetime. And that's mine. So anyway, so I'd got a name. I'd got the kind of concept of how it was going to work. And then the Milestone pub, which is um, like 15 minutes drive from where I live, a place called Crystal Peaks, um, had a band cancel on it. And I wasn't busy that particular evening. So I uh, put a jam band together. I got, um, let's see, Mr. Simon Freeston on drums, um, Cello Angelini on guitar, and Mr. Andrew Bo Barber on vocals and myself on bass. And um, <clears throat> so what I did was I put together a, a set list of songs that I knew that lineup would all know pretty well together. And um, and then we just turned up and we did a gig, you know, sort of off the cuff, no rehearsal, just we just played. We got a pretty good turnout and um, and it was good. It was a good gig. Um, I was really happy with it and um, so then I booked another gig similar circumstances Chilo wasn't available I got a different guitar player in to do that one and um, and so this is how it went along and it was fairly slow at first just filling up the odd date in the diary um, but it, everybody seemed to have a good time doing it so I stuck to my new rules I decided I would only work with people who were reliable, fun, um, and a damn good player. Just people I like to be around. Nice, fun people. And um, and that worked pretty well. And I decided that if anyone turned out not to be like that, then I just wouldn't book them anymore. Because um, if I'm using the pool of players, there's no need to fall out with anybody, is there? You just just don't call someone again you know 
so that's fun fun that's the wrong word so that's cool whatever right so um by this time my daughter had um made a swear box and um we'd started donating a bit of money to the hospital so it was all going quite well um and then i did a gig where um we had multiple singers because i'd got wayne miles on keyboards who sings very very well gav coulson on guitar who's a great singer um and um and i did a, a few songs myself because i thought let's try this idea of having multiple singers instead of having a, a lead singer and uh, that worked very well i liked that and um it got me back to the mic i'd not done any singing in a band for a long time and thought i probably never would again but i enjoyed it, it went well and that gave me an opportunity to sort of do some fronting do some of the talking to the audience because you know basically it was my band um because <clears throat> i was doing all the hard work behind the scenes so it made sense for me to be up there doing some of the talking and um, and then with that same lineup i did uh, a gig at a club in sheffield um uh, firth park club if anyone out there has ever played it um you know it has a fabulous a spacious lift uh, that never breaks down and uh, just a few stairs as an alternative to the lift and um so we're doing this place and during the break the lads said to me you know what you should do is you should make it your band you should um front it more and call it jamie malinder's swear box because all the band members keep changing apart from you and it gives the audience somebody to identify with so i pondered on that for a while and i decided that was a good way to go forward so i started doing that and um it kind of the whole thing just evolved actually very naturally very organically i think you could say you know we kind of eventually i decided it was going quite well so i'd get a backdrop so um I needed a design and I designed a logo to put on my bases um, and um, so I thought <clears throat> well I'll stick that logo on there and I want to point out the fact that we're always 100% live no backing track uh, that could be an argument for another video and um, so I put my web address on there and you know um, the band proved to be ever popular you know we got um, more and more demands for gigs and um, I just got booked back everywhere no problem at all and um, so um, it's just it's been a, it's just been a great success story really which has been um, very rewarding for me as the organizer now I was talking in a previous video about getting to know landlords and people have booked gigs and um, that's something that I've had very little to do with in the past something I never wanted to be involved in I always wanted to just be in a band you know and, and let someone else do all that kind of stuff and um, but um, but that's been really good for me um, it's really made me grow up a bit and um, organize things uh, organizing things has been um, a big part of the the key to the success of it because at the end of the day it's my band if i want things to happen i have to make them happen and if i want them to happen um and execute them well then the organization has to be fabulous because the way i do it is gradually over time i've added more and more people to the pool of players um, we're probably close to about 20 different players now that um, that I call upon at different times to do swear box. And if you get called upon to do a gig, then a little while before the gig, you know, a week or so, I'll send a list of songs out that I want to do at that gig. And, um, um, and then it's up to you to do your homework. 
and come to the gig prepared. And um, it's so we've retained an element of the, um, you know, the jamming, the kind of off the cuff, seat of the pants sort of excitement of it. But um, I organise it well enough that I can um, make it flow pretty well too. I don't want to be one of those bands that's kind of stood, you know, looking at each other, talking to each other about what song we're going to do next and keeping the audience waiting. Um, so, um, the pool of players um, continues to grow. Just, you know, whenever I get a gig that... Um, I can't put a lineup together for when it's time to introduce somebody new. Um, and then what's happened is now that we've been doing Swearbox for probably about three years or more, it's over three years now, I think. Um, what's happened is that we, it's kind of branched off into slightly different versions of the band. So, number one is the way that Swearbox started with a lead singer, uh, a four-piece rock outfit, and we go out and we do sort of classic rock uh, covers and a few surprises in there. Um, and um, when we do that, I let the, the singer do the front end of the band, as it seems to be more appropriate. And I just do a little bit of talking. And then... Um, we have the other version of the band where we have multiple singers um, and in that version of the band I now do a lot more singing um, which uh, I've really enjoyed doing and surprisingly has been a big part of the um, continued success of the band it seems to have gone down very well with audiences I didn't think it would um, nobody was more surprised than me um, and um, so with me taking on more singing it's meant that I've had to look carefully at what material we're doing um, to suit my voice so that version of the band I'm doing stuff like um, Tom Petty um, and uh, T-Rex and Neil Young um, we've just brought in a bit of Gary Newman so it makes it a slightly different from the norm kind of a band. It's not just standard rock covers. Um, I always make sure I've got at least one other very strong singer with me. Um, someone who can cover material that um, doesn't suit my voice so well. Um, so that usually means we've got some heavier songs in there. Classic rock, rock and blues type things. Um, and um, I always make sure I've got a, an excellent drummer with me um, because that's um, I always just feel much more much more secure about it um, with a great powerhouse behind me uh, so I don't have to worry about timekeeping you know because I'm now thinking about a lot of things other than just playing bass um, <clears throat> about what song's coming up next and what to say to the audience and what are the words and, um, and then the other version of a swear box that's emerged is that we now have an acoustic offshoot of the band because I was looking at uh, my diary a couple of years ago and um, <clears throat> Sundays were getting hard to fill more and more Sunday gigs have disappeared and I was looking at a way of filling Sundays up and um, I've always been very interested in acoustic music but it's not something I've done an awful lot of and then um, I noticed that there were quite a few acoustic gigs um, particularly at Sunday tea times dotted around you know so I thought well we could we could do that you know um, so I sounded out the lads and a lot of them seemed to be quite up for it so I just um, put together a set of songs that would be appropriate for that and um, and then um, I um, booked a few gigs and they went really really well and um, they were really really popular gigs and, and they, 
they continue to be extremely popular gigs so that really helped me fill up Sundays and for those gigs I do still play some bass I play my acoustic bass I play my fretless bass um, it also gives me a chance to take my 12 string acoustic out and uh, play some uh, open tuning slide guitar as well play um, quite a few tunes on my um, on my six string acoustic and I've started bringing out the um, cigar box guitar as well so and and uh, sometimes we have a percussionist sometimes we don't if we don't I've got um, a stomper pedal and uh, a tambourine and um, you know the acoustic gigs are just as varied as the electric gigs um, but it gives me a chance to pursue a kind of music that I've always liked but I've never really done that much of and it's actually led to me getting the confidence to do some solo acoustic gigs and some duo acoustic gigs I've done gigs <coughs> sitting in the corner of a restaurant you know just playing and uh, singing some tunes and um, feeling like I've been ignored but making quite good money out of it so it's um, Swearbox continues to grow organically it, depending on you know what's happening on the scene what nights of the week I need to fill up who's available who's going through a phase of being um, really busy with their own band and so I need to find a replacement for that member etc etc um, and um, I absolutely love it. it it means me doing something very very different from what I do with the other bands I play for um, mostly with the other bands I play for my focus is on playing bass um, and uh, with Swearbox I get a chance to sing and front and um, and it's really nice to do that to bring out that side of me but then it's also equally nice actually to then go and play with John Verity or go and play with Paddy Maguire um, and only just have to think about playing bass again um, I love doing the, t the two things equally now and um, I intend to continue so if you need a band and uh, you need a band that does a particular kind of music we can probably cover it because the repertoire is vast um, I can put together a lineup especially for a certain event you know if somebody wants a rock band I can call upon the right guys to do that um, if you want an acoustic outfit equally I can call upon the right guys to do that um, so um, yeah so if you need to book a band whatever it is that you need we can probably do it so get in touch and um, we've just started getting some merchandise sorted out for the band um, which I just mentioned in uh, a couple of videos ago we have these t-shirts available um, and I want to know from people what, what other merch do you want do you want mugs do you want stickers um, so send me messages let me know what you want and if you get a chance to check us out come and see Swearbox and um, don't forget to swear generously.